Mr. Mailula, you are not a strange phenomenon because music is one of our international languages of the world. In 1995, when we won the Rugby World Cup, Dad Mandela stood on the world stage and explained to people that sport and music are international languages of the world. So African child, you are not alone in loving a woman whose language you do not understand, but you have allowed her voice to transcend into your body and to enjoy the beautiful sounds of Uzaza, Uzahara, Bulel, Uspinaj, Uspinaj. You know, to highlight what you're saying, I'm obsessed with the continent of Africa, and I've done a lot of traveling on the continent. And everywhere I go, they play Ingomas Gabulelwa. I was in Ivory Coast in winter for a wedding, Baitula Olondewe. When I summited Kilimanjaro on the day Utatu Huma Sigela passed away, reaching base camp at Kili, they played Ingomas Gabrahu, but also Zahara. On the oceans at Zanzibar, when they take us out to go and swim with the dolphins, they're playing Zahara. When we come back at sunset and we're enjoying our drinks, who are they playing? Uzahara. On the sandbanks of Tunisia, squad biking with my friends, who are they playing? Uzahara. On Arabian horseback, visiting the great pyramids of Giza and the Sphinx, who are they playing? When I visited Dakar and the Guri Island, the Slave Island, the kids were singing in the boats, who are they singing? Visiting Senegal, visiting Ghana, visiting Nigeria, who are they playing? So you are not alone, sir, when you do not understand her language, but you can hear her spirit and you can understand her heart. And as you said, her gift of music will live on in perpetuity. Ladies and gentlemen, speaking on behalf of the entertainment industry as her friend, please welcome on stage, Sir Ms. Mfong. Personally, I don't like speeches, and I've even said it, it's in my will, at my funeral, I don't want speeches. No, I'm being serious. And I'll tell you why I don't like speeches, because a part of me feels like we, we box everything and pack everything in real life and save it for speeches at a funeral. And for me, is that we hope that the person that we're speaking to can hear us, but we don't know. So for me, why do we save all this time when we could have told this person what I'm about to say? Because we only imagine what happens on the other side. No one knows if there's even the other side. We live in hope based on our religions, and our beliefs that they are on the other side listening. But for me, it's like, why? When are we ever going to learn to say what we feel when we feel it at that time? Chances are 80% of people in this room haven't seen Zahara in months. But we flew and drove from everywhere in the world and made the effort because she's gone. And it's not because we didn't know what she was going through, even when before she went to hospital. So for me, I'm big on telling the person how I feel at the time. And I never run out of, I love you, I care, are you okay? And with Zahara, I just want to quickly say, tell you guys how I met her. 
I met her before she recorded an album. I met her, she was basking at a restaurant in East London. And she always likes to tell the story, which I was the first person to give her a paper note in her basket. And I, I had a stash of 20 rands. And the only part I wanted was when she went, cling, 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 and I go, pinda foot. Cling, 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 and that song was a hit to me before she even recorded it. And I guess that's the song that they discovered her with. And I knew from that time. And even that day, I said, if I was a record executive, I would take this girl. But then, as fate would happen, she became one of the biggest superstars that we have. The other day, I posted something about how we have failed her as an industry, as friends, and we have failed her and we owe her an apology. And I'm one of the people that owes her an apology. And there was a time I remember in, I was hosting the Summer Awards and I made a joke about her drinking and stuff. And only later in years you realize what you say to people, how you make people feel, is very important, how you make people feel. And I learned my lesson because I took it for granted as a joke. Kanti, you don't know how much you hurt people. And I realized later that I've hurt her. And luckily, we had time on earth to reconcile and become friends again. But still, she went through a rough time. Where was so easy? No way. Where were we? No way. When, she, when we could have helped and said, show me, you need help on APCMT, we're carrying on with our lives. And we need to internally apologize to her and say, we are sorry, we can do better. What are we learning from Zahara's story is to do better. Stop making fun of other people's downfalls. Sing I'm like this, and here I am now standing as if I was there throughout. I wasn't there throughout. So, the biggest lesson I've learned, and I hope everyone in this room learns, don't ever laugh or make a joke on someone else's downfall. If you can't help, shut up. If you can't contribute positively, shut up. The same people on social media that keep on saying, We've lost an icon. Did you treat her like an icon? I don't think so. Did you treat her like you are scared of losing her? I don't think so. But we can change. We can do better. Moving forward, anyone who's listening to this, let's do better. In the name of Zahara, let's do better. Let nobody, whether famous or not famous, go through hell if you can help. And help does not mean just monetary. Help is a talk, is a call, is a, are you okay? Can I give you a hug? And stuff like that. Let's do better. In the name of Zahara, Zahara, we are sorry. May your soul rest in peace. Please forgive us. And may your soul keep thriving and thriving wherever you are. Your dreams have not ended. They've just ended on earth. But wherever you are, Zahara, Please keep shining and forgive us. We love you. Thank you.